appreciate so much you listening today. Uh, the Lord is good. This is the day which the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, in just a little while, we'll be looking into John chapter 10, so if you can get your Bible and prepare, uh, we'll be there in just a few minutes. And while you're doing that, let me just mention next week on the 23rd of this October, Sunday at 4 o'clock, we're having the Youth Fantastic, and uh, wow, it's going to be a lot of fun for all the children. We'll be serving hot dogs, uh, chips, cookies, and uh, all of them will get a bag of candy when they leave. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy games, the ball toss, uh, cornhole games, be a cakewalk, balloon bus, fishing pond. It's going to be a lot of fun, and the children can wear costumes if they would like. So uh, please uh, get all the children and let them know about it. That'll be on the 23rd of October at 4 o'clock here at the church in our gymnasium. All right, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, sing our little welcome song. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites the chosen people, come and dine. With his manna <clears throat> he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the Master calleth. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now. Come and dine. Well, <clears throat> again, we're going to begin reading in John chapter 10, just a moment. While you turn there, let me tell you about a Hallmark Father's Day card I heard about that said, Dad, thanks to your lectures, I never change horses in the middle of a job worth doing. 
and the squeaky wheel, and I know the squeaky wheel gets the worm, and I never count my chickens until I've walked a mile in their shoes. And then on the next page it said, and you thought I wasn't listening. Well, many times uh, we don't really listen. Like the fellow who saw his friend, his friend had a, dark, a black eye. And he said, hey, what happened? He said, well, I got in an argument with this guy and, and uh, he told me to shut up. And I thought he said, stand up. Well, uh, if we don't listen, we can get ourselves into a lot of trouble. Southern Baptist preacher by the name of Rick Boyne tells about a man by the name of Franklin, or about President Franklin Roosevelt, I should say, who uh, often uh, hated those long receiving lines at the White House uh, gatherings, and he complained that nobody really listened and, you know, just went through the formality. And one day during the reception, uh, it said the president decided to try an experiment. And so as folks came by, down through the line, he shook their hands and he murmured, I murdered my grandmother this morning. Well, the guests responded with phrases like, marvelous. Well, keep up the good work, president. Or we're proud of you. God bless you, sir. And uh, obviously they weren't paying any attention to what he was said. And then finally, until they sort the end of the line, there was an ambassador from Bolivia and uh, actually heard what the president said. And uh, the ambassador <clears throat> leaned over and whispered and said, well, I'm sure she had it coming. Well, today I want <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, <clears throat> having a real hard time with my uh, throat here. Uh, I'm sh uh, today I want to speak on the subject, listening to the shepherd. And so let's read in John chapter 10, and uh, let's begin reading in verse 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth forth, or he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Then in verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And then if you will look in uh, verse uh, 22, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. And he came, then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered unto them, and he said, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. And I said unto you, notice verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Let me ask you today, are you one of God's sheep? Are you one of the flock? Do you hear his voice? He said, my sheep hear my voice. And then, do you follow him? For he said, my sheep follow me. In all the seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, in every church, he, there's one verse that is in all of them. It said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. A lot of conversations are sort of like as they say, a worm in a cornfield, in one ear and out the other. We hear voices, but don't really listen. We don't really comprehend what is being said. Well, let's pray today and ask God to bless our time together. Our Heavenly Father, I do pray today that you might open our hearts, open our ears, that we might hear the voice of God. 
And I pray that we will heed the voice of God. And that you would accomplish the purpose that you have in each of us today. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Attorney David Gibbs, who is the founder and director of the Christian Law Association, tells of a time when he was in a meeting in, uh, off of Alaska in the Aleutian Islands. And uh, he and another attorney was getting ready to fly uh, back to Anchorage and then fly on back down to uh, their home. And uh, a pastor came up and said, hey, said, uh, I, can, I'll, I'll be, I can save you some money. Uh, you don't have to use those tickets on a commercial flight. Uh, I, I've got a plane. I can fly you down to Anchorage. And then from uh, it'll, it'll save you some money. So anyway, they uh, decided that they would uh, uh, fly down with this pastor. And uh, the pastor had a small plane. Uh, and uh, they got into the plane. Uh, that is, uh, David Gibbs and his other attorney friend. And they, uh, everything started off good. They got off the ground, got up into the sky and... Everything was going good, and then all of a sudden they came into some clouds. And the pastor that was the pilot turned to him and he said, Oh, no. He said, We're, we're getting into clouds. And he said, uh, I can't fly in clouds. He said, I, I pass out. And shortly after that, David Gibbs said they were in the clouds, and they looked over, and the pilot's eyes rolled back, and he passed out cold. And well, the two Attorneys left in the plane uh, weren't sure what to do, and they, they thought they were probably going to die. And they tried to wake up the pilot, but couldn't, couldn't revive him. And so uh, David Gibbs uh, said, well, let's see if we can get the radio, and handed the mic to his, uh, the other attorney and said, try to, to get somebody on the radio. And the other pilot just kept saying, hello, hello or not the pilot, but the other attorney said, hello, 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 hello. And finally, uh, they got a response from a 747 pilot flying a freighter to Tokyo from Anchorage. And uh, his uh, response was, hey, don't you know proper radio etiquette? And they explained that uh, their circumstances, how that the pilot had passed out and neither one of them knew how to fly and they were in big trouble. So the uh, pilot said, well, I will circle around so you don't get out of range, and I'll try to get a hold of the of, uh, Anchorage emergency and, and see if they can uh, help you get down. So in a few minutes, they heard a voice from Anchorage telling them to, uh, that uh, he understood that they a situ situation because you know, the pilot had told him from the 747, and he said, I am freezing all the traffic around, the air traffic around Anchorage. And he said, first, I've got to locate you. And then I'll, I'll be able to help you uh, get down. Well, uh, in a few minutes, the man said, I have located you. I can see you. He said, you cannot see me, but I can see you. And said, in a few minutes, you're about four minutes away from a mountain. And uh, you would crash, but he said, I can help you if you listen to me and do exactly what I say to do. And then he said, don't listen to any other voices. And meaning that sometimes we have voices within our head that tell us, oh, we need to do this or that. And he said, don't listen to any other voice but mine. And it said, don't watch the storm, and I'll be able to get you through it. Well, after some time, they finally uh, arrived near Alaska, or excuse me, uh, Anchorage. And his voice from the tower said, I'm going to line you up. I'm going to bring you down to the runway. And he said, as you approach the runway, you will see some lights. And there will be a cross, and the cross will lead you home. Well, they landed, and as they did, the pilot woke up, 
And uh, the voice from the tower said, thanks for listening. And then the man explained. He said, I watched them crash and burn because they won't listen. As I heard that story, I could not help but think of those who are going through the storms of life. And oh my, as you look around in our world today, there is a tremendous storm going on. And in a world that we live, it is filled with danger and violence and evil. Uh, think of all the people that are addicted to alcohol and drugs and they're crashing and burning. They're confused, frustrated. Think of the young people who are crashing and burning. The marriages of many are crashing. Those listening to the deceitful words of Satan, living in sin, saying all is well, and yet they're headed for destruction. And the people in the middle of the financial storms, the health storms, and many of them crashing and burning. My friends, life is a serious journey. And as we travel on this journey in our flight towards eternity, I think of Psalms 32, 8. And God said, I will guide thee with mine eye. You see, the Lord is the eye in the sky. And Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. No, we cannot see God. We can see the evidences of God, but we cannot see God, but He sees us. And God can protect us. Even protect us at times when we're not even aware of. The Bible speaks of angels. According to Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? You see, we must listen to the voice of God, our shepherd, and he will bring us safely home by the way of the cross, listening and following Jesus, our shepherd. Now, as I heard that story and as I read the scriptures, I thought of three things that we need to learn in this message today. First of all, we need to learn to listen carefully to God's voice. John 1837 says, Everyone that is of the truth heareth me. 1 Corinthians 10, 14, 10 says, There are so many kinds of voices in the world. And there is a great danger today that we can be led astray by listening to the wrong voices. And then there's a warning. Don't listen to all those voices. You see, how do we know it's not the devil speaking deceitfully? For sure, we had better not listen to the devil. But remember, the Holy Spirit who will never lead us contrary to the Word of God. And, you know, how many times have we heard somebody say something like, oh, just follow your heart. But there's a big problem with that. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And then I think of Proverbs fourteen twelve that said, There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And then others say, well, just let your conscience be your guide. Oh, well, that may be helpful at times, but there's still a big problem. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisies, now listen to this, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You see, sometimes people can be so callous and hard towards sin and reality that their conscience has been seared and they can commit all kinds of horrible sins and not even be convicted of it. 
And then some choose to listen to other people. Uh, they just they follow the crowd. However, the crowd, and just because it may be many, may not be headed on in the right direction. In fact, God said, broad is the way to eternal destruction, and many there be which are there at. And so uh, we, we got to be careful, and we need to listen carefully to God. And I trust today that you will determine, I want to listen to God and God only. And then we can learn from this message not only to listen carefully to God, but trust completely in God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. And then perhaps you've heard somebody say, ah, I don't need God. I can handle it myself. Well, that's a big problem as well. For Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So some trust in themselves. Others put their confidence and trust in others. But then you read Psalms 118, 8 and 9. It says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes or uh, princesses or, or the government and so on the princes. Amazing how we are quick to turn to someone to get their opinion or advice or their help, and yet so reluctant to turn to the one who is all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful. And so we need to learn to listen carefully to God, trust completely in God, and then thirdly, do exactly as God says. Deuteronomy eleven twenty six 26 says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. A curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. So we need to obey exactly what he tells us. Going back to that experience that David Gibbs and his attorney friends and the pastor had in that airplane. If they had not listened carefully and did exactly as they were told to do by a voice of somebody they could not even see, but they had to put confidence and trust and they got safely home. Remember when Elijah was going through a terrible storm in his life? Jezebel was after him, wanting to kill him. And so he fled into the wilderness, in the desert. And in 1 Kings 19, 11, it said, God told Elijah to go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And it says, And a great and strong wind rent or tore the mountains. And broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Imagine that kind of a storm. But it says, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. In verse 13. And Elijah heard it. Have you ever wondered what you should do and thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if God could just speak out of the sky and say, hey, this is what I want you to do or this is what I need you to do. This is the decision you need to make. Well, God doesn't normally speak that way, does He? God did speak audibly to the children of Israel. Remember, as uh, he read the Ten Commandments and gave them audibly to them. But the people did not like that. <clears throat> and they were so afraid that they cried out and said, Moses, you speak to us, but uh, we don't want to hear 
the Word of God that way. I heard a man tell about a professional hunting guide who was trying to get his client into a place where he could kill a trophy antelope. And he told the man, he said, I want you to follow me and do exactly as I say. And of course, be very quiet. Just, just do what I tell you to do. And they were going up the side of a mountain, trying to get to the top of the mountain. And he had told the man, he said, when we get to that particular place, I believe you have a very good chance of being able to find a trophy antelope. And as they were going up the mountain, all of a sudden, the hunter, following the guide, took off and went a different direction. And the hunting guide just stood there in amazement, not knowing what he was doing. And the guy kind of motioned and said, I'm going this way. Well, the guide just waited and then he continued up on the hill. And the guide said when he got to the top of the hill, he saw a huge trophy antelope. But unfortunately, the hunter had decided to go a different direction and never even saw the trophy antelope. He missed an opportunity, perhaps, of a lifetime. Now, God normally speaks to us through the Word of God as it is read, as we hear it, as we study it, as it is taught. Psalms 119.105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Proverbs 6.23 says, For the commandment is a lamp. You see, the word of God shows us the way through the storms of life. Jesus is the living word, and the Bible is the written word. And then God also speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. John 16.13, Howbeit when he the Spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Now remember, as I said a while ago, the Holy Spirit will never lead you contrary to the Word of God. Now the Holy Spirit is that voice that we normally hear when the Word of God is preached or taught, and the Holy Spirit says, that's right. And when we think of our sin, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and of our need of salvation. So today, as we look into the Word of God, hear the Word of God, read it, if we can read it, then God spoke to you. Did you hear it? Did you heed it? Remember James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now I want, to, I want us to listen very carefully to a few verses that Jesus gave us. The shepherd tells us in Luke 13, 3, I tell you no, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Are you listening to his voice? And then listen to Jesus, the shepherd in John 3.35, when he said, Except ye be born again, ye cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he said in John 6.37, He that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And then the shepherd tells us in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, my friend, I trust today that your ears are attentive and listening very carefully to our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, who invites you to open the door and let him come into your life that he might give you everlasting life. So I invite you to come to him. Trust him today as your Savior. 
come to him and trust him as your guide to direct you in your life. God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I pray today that we will learn these valuable lessons to listen carefully to the Word of God and to trust in Him. And Lord, I pray that You might meet our spiritual needs this hour. Lord, help us to do exactly what You tell us to do. That we might be saved and that we might be directed in the path that you have laid out before us, that we might be brought safely home. And for this, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember, the Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Tell of his goodness and tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day and be listening for the voice from heaven.